Hey, welcome back. We're going to talk about binary to hexadecimal circuit. Made a custom part for you. Uh, used a microcontroller, wrote some software for it. You'll be learning how to do that in microprocessors. But what all you need to know is when you put the correct inputs in here, it will display on the seven segment display like this. So, and the actual part is. this one right here and this one right here. Uh, I put a gold stripe on it just for me to keep track of what I was using. You're probably going to have a silver stripe across the top. What this does is you put binary numbers here and the, it will display it here. Uh, I did this as a very generic kind of hookup here so you can see because sometimes we have different kind of parts uh, you might need to this one here has everything hooked up together for these two so these are LEDs as you can see these are connected here so this here's a decimal point you're not going to be using it but just to demonstrate so this is the left decimal point and this is the right decimal point and you see they're hooked up to the same pin up top here you'll see that all of these are connected so this would be a common this would be the left common on pin 10 and pin 5 is the right common make all these work so when you these here as you remember these are minuses so this side is the minus so they're the common cathode type display when you bring this to to, to ground or to, to low and you bring this to high but you have to use a resistor remember these are LEDs you definitely have to use a resistor so like uh, I have these at 330 so when you have a 330 and you bring this high and you bring this one low this digit would turn on. This is the G digit, which turned out to be this center bar. And if you turn on the, if you put this here to low and you turn that on, then this G digit, that G segment right there would turn on. So depending on which common you turned on would get you either of the two displays. You could actually turn them both on, but that, that would just make them parallel and not quite useful. Now the chip has a couple, uh, in, a couple of slight differences this is the only chip that you're going to wire up the power differently every other chip is going to be wired up the same as the op amp and the diagonal corners this one here has the power hooked up backwards so definitely follow the video and do it right we're going to use we're going to all these here are just on the schematic but you'll see it in, when, when we do the assembly i have pull down resistors on everything this resistor right here tells the chip what kind of display you have hooked up. If you pull it low, it's a common cathode. If you pull it high, it'll be a common anode. And you notice it's on pin C for the common, is how I configured it. Decimal point again is not used, and all the other pins are wired up. Now, I wired the, I changed the pins to match up to make it quite easy so you could stagger these. Actually, see what I'm talking about when we put this together. So let's go ahead and do the build, original prototype, or original board. These are your inputs, W, X, Y, Z. This here is the blank. What the blank does is it clears the screen. It's active high. This pin here needs to be turned on to work. The spacing here is a bit critical on the resistors, so I set this up to where you could stagger these, and that way they don't short out. And I did the same for these. This one, this is the only one you'll notice that this one here is wearing long sleeves. I took the insulation from a piece of wire. Turns out these are three, by the way. Those are threes right there. I stretched it from here to here, and I put some insulation so otherwise it, would, it, it could possibly short out here. The common, this is pin 10 here for this part. This is, a five, this is five and five. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I put one case in here. Go ahead and put them in because you'll need to use them later uh, for lab six when you use this as a dual display you'll need these resistors so let's put them in now go ahead and start the build you need to get the following parts there are seven 1k ohm resistors so that's brown black red seven 330s that's orange orange brown one 10k ohm resistor microcontroller configured to be a hexadecimal driver. Part number on this uh, dual seven segment display is a 36228H. 
the uh, A stands for common cathode. If it was a B, it would be a common anode. And that would be um, okay as well, but we're not using those. Alright, um, so let's get parts put in. You're going to need a red wire and a black wire to do your power jumpers. And they're exactly opposite what you think they are, so let's be careful with that. Straighten the pins out, and I'm going to put this in. This here is going to go at 40. So, pin 1. Now, pin 1 on this part has both a dimple and a notch. And so, it's it's lined up nice and straight, and you just gently push it down. You should feel the whole thing bite in. Alright, so before we put the display in, we need to put uh, some resistors. We're going to put the display in at 49. So, at 48, we're going to put in a resistor. The 1K ohm resistor, and at 55, we're going to put in the other set. So, uh, you're going to get two of these, you're going to bend them tight like this. This is for the 1Ks. Remember, cut them 3 eighths of an inch. Okay. You can bend all the 1Ks to be tight. Do not cut them yet. Just bend them. But two of them you're going to cut. Putting this one here at 48. Again, resistors, don't matter what, what color they are, you just need to get them in. And then the other one is going to go at 55. You want to get these in before you put the display in. Because you're going to put the display almost on top of them. Alright, display the pins. You want the pins to go in on F. F over here, the F and D. All right, so now we have the pins in. Remember, this is exactly opposite all the other parts, so this is the only time you're going to do it this way. The ground is over here, power is over here. So this here is a is a is a 940A. You're going to go to the power bus red and 40J is going to go to the ground and both of those are nines Forty J is to ground, forty A is to five volts. The next one is C which is pin ten on the chip is going to go to ground. 8, 9, 10. You can fold this flush and do a ground. This is a 10K, which is the uh, orange band. So it's brown, black, orange. Goes on the 44. So 44J, 10K to ground. We need to put our 1K in. 1Ks you can fold wash. You'll need five of them. Fold them flush, cut them flush, or cut them appropriate. How long you cut them? Three eighths of an inch. That's how long you cut them. Do not cut your 330s yet. Those are special and do not cut them all. W which is your, your uh, one input looking at the schematic here. So the W pin 2 and that's going to go to ground. And that's going to go from ground to B. 41 and 42 are grounds. That is a little long. 41 and 42 Two or B to ground. Forty-three, eight a eight a high, and then forty-one J 
is to ground. And 42J is to ground. There's 43J to ground as well. Now what's left is to hook up the resistors. So I'm going to do the bottom one first. I am going to steal one out of my original. This is what I wound up doing. 20 to 24. And one is at 49 and pin 5 right next to the to this resistor which is 44 hold that appropriately I'll make I'm leaving it long so you can see it so from 44 to to uh, 49 Okay, 44 to 49 is the first 330. I left that long. Cut the short. Remember to cut your wire short if you don't. Uh, the reason why you're cutting the wire short, I should have told you this a long time ago. The main reason why you cut the wire short is if you leave them long, you will have, the wires will touch and the electrons will have a party at your battery's expense. Alright, so that was 45 to 51. F is pin 7, which is this last one, and that goes to pin 4 on the display itself. There's um, 2 there and there's 3 there. When in doubt, you can leave it a little bit longer and cut it again later. After you got it close. Alright, so. Right, so that takes care of the bottom set, with the exception I want you to put a ground in. And as soon as this up and get it working, I want you to pull one of the two grounds of the displays. I don't want both displays working. If you have both displays working, you will be confused. And that would be bad. Because you're running single digit hex, not uh, two digit hex. Because two digit hex would be up to uh, 255. From 0 to 255. Single digit hex is from 0 to 15. Ground to 53. Pull this one out later. Once we know that both sides are on the top side, all of these here need to get connected to display. Remember, this resistor here tells the little computer inside to run the display. We are going to go from here, or the second position on this chip, which is pin 50. So this here is going to go from 43i to 50i. Let's do the count. 14, 13, 12, 11, this is pin 11, 11 is B, and B is pin 9 on your, on, on this display, so pin 8 is C, and that's where we put this one in, so it's going to be the same spacing, so here we are for the same spacing, So you can see why I like to use needle nose pliers. E, which is pin 9 on the chip, to um, pin 7 on the display. Alright, yeah, okay. So. Pin 9 on it, so uh, 7, 8, 9. I'm going to go to pin 7 here. 45 to 52 G. Alright, the last one is going to go from 46 to 
three. One, two. One, two. Yeah, 53. And we're going to go on in the diagonal. But before you put this one on, you got to get up to this one long sleeves. So you're going to need long sleeves that are going to be three long each. You can use any color as long as it's not black or red. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to take and strip off a nice chunk here. And I'm going to measure this. I told you it was three. So that was pretty good. One, two, three. And the other one was three as well. So now I took the, take the long sleeve. Sorry for doing it this way, but I got it on my fingernail and I just slide it on. Wire is a little bit smaller than your regular wire, so it works nicely. And then push it up snug and bend it right there. Okay, so again, I slide it on. Of course, I can't see the end anymore. There we go. Alright. And there. So this will give us um, from here to, oh, made it a little too long. All right, so you get the idea. So trim one of these a little bit. So three and two work. You get the idea. So there, that's going to work nicely. So forty six to um, fifty three. Doesn't matter really which one you put it in, but I made these long enough to where I can put it in over here. Okay. So that was 46J to 53H. Alright, so that's all hooked up. Now comes the fun part. You need four more wires any color. I'm going to use the color code at the top end. Blue, purple, gray, white. I'm just going to make jumper wires. They can be just about any length. I'm going to make these about 15 long jumper wires. I'm using purple, gray, blue, and white. Pin 2 is on the schematic. The W, which is 2 to the, two to the 0. So that's the 1 position. Now you see that wire? That's a little too long. And if I leave it that way, it will short out. It will join together and give us a bad answer intermittently. And it makes finding it so much fun. This here is the six wire, the seven wire, in purple, and that is going to go to the number one switch. This is one, this is two, this is four, and that's eight. So this is two to the zero, two to the one, two to the two, and two to the three. Eight. The gray wire is 
is going to go to the 2 to the 2 position, otherwise known as 4, because 2 times 2 is 4. 4 is pin 13. And again, this wire is a little long, so let me cut that a little bit shorter. Uh, it's running really late tonight. So. Okay, and then the four, the 8 position is going to go to pin 12. Okay. So when you turn this on, and if you get a minus sign, that means that you have this jumper in the wrong position. If it blinks, it means that you have the other jumper in the wrong position. Now, why, why did this light come on, but not the other? And also, I, I change it to green. Okay, so, um, I want both lights on at the first test, when you first power this up. And that is because we didn't hook up the ground to the other display. So, I am going to hook up the ground to the other display. And I'm just using a jumper jumper, so it doesn't have to be pretty. But it has to be. So, um, this here is going to be my ground right here. And now you see I wanted you to put long sleeves on that resistor. There you go. So now you see them both light up. So let's turn on the 8 position, and there we have 8. So now that I demonstrated that that works, I'm going to pull that off. And so now let's test our hexadecimal. So like I said, uh, all off is 0. This here is the 1. We got a 1 there. 2. 4. And we know the 8 works, but there you go. There's 8. Okay. So 1, 2, 4, 8. And then when you start doing combinations, so let's go ahead and do a count. So this is how you can learn hexadecimal and just get the real feel for it. So 1, 2, 4, 8. So I'm, I'm using my finger now to hold this down. That's 1. We know that that's 2. That's two. So 2 plus 1 is 3. And so this here, we know, we know the 4 works. So 4 plus 1 is 5. 4 plus 2 is 6. 4 plus 3 is 7. Alright, so 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. So what do you think 10 is? 10 is A. Cool. Alright. So 10 plus 1 is 11. And 11 turned out to be B. So 8 plus... So that was uh, 8 plus 3 is B. Um, so 8 plus 4 is C. So that is 12. So 13. So that's 8, 4, and 1 is D. So 8, 4, and 1 is 13. 14 is E. So that's 8, 4, and 2. And 8, 4, 2, and 1, which is 15. And there you go. Congratulations, you built a hexadecimal display system. Alright, there's a custom part. You can learn how to make it yourself in microprocessors. Um, that would be a pretty cool side project for you to do. It's easy to do. So there you go. Congratulations. You are now finished with part A of your uh, first lab. So the, the initial setup. So now you have all your stuff configured. Remember, you want to turn these two off so you don't draw that much power off your battery because each of these draw a little bit of power. All right. Thank you so very much, and I hope you enjoy the class, and please let me know.